Hello, this is Yvonne Meneer, and this is video 13 in the series of EQ Stitch videos for YouTube. A student recently sent me this design here, and what they were trying to do was to make it a continuous sew design. It is for a border, so they wanted to be able to just move their hoop along and have the border repeat. And what they were finding was when they were drawing this that they could not find a continuous path. And they are correct, the way this is drawn, it's difficult to have a continuous path. And so I just want to show you a way that you can create a continuous path just by adding one more line. And my suggestion is to add a line through the center. And that way you can find your way around and enter and exit each of these items and still continue in a forward moving uh, manner. So I'm just going to show you how I did that. What I did was I took the image that the student sent me and I brought it into the uh, stitching work table. And it doesn't make any difference at this point if you're on the applique work table or if you're on the embroidery work table. Uh, either table will work. Now what the student told me was that they used two different tools. They used the line tool and the Beezer curve tool to create this. And that's fine. That You can certainly do that. For me, in my hands, I have difficulty um, having the tools, remembering to switch back and forth on the tools. I would rather draw with one tool only and then create the shapes that I need afterwards. So for me, I like working with this straight line drawing tool. It works well for me. I find it's easier to control than the Beezier Curve tool. So what I did was I started at the bottom. I went up. So it's a click, drag, and release from point to point over to here and then back up to the center. Now I know she has this as a curve here, but that's all right. I'll create a curve in a minute. For now, I'm just getting my path. I'm only thinking about the path that the machine is going to take as it's sewing. So I'm going from point to point and you can see that I have indeed added that line through the center where she didn't have that. And I did that just so I can find my way around without stopping. I can continuously draw in a forward motion without having to uh, stop and start. So I don't want jump stitches is what I'm trying to avoid. So I'm trying to find the path that I can still move forward from element to element without having any jump stitches. And again, the reason I use this tool is it's just easier for me to concentrate on the path and not worry about the shape. I just want to get the pathing line in there first. Now certainly you can use more than one tool. That's totally up to you. But I just find it easier not to worry about the tool. What I'm thinking about is the path instead. So I'm creating that continuous path as I go up the border design here and I'm almost up to the top okay so now I've created the continuous path design from bottom to top without any jumps I've flowed through the whole thing now, of course, my design doesn't look like the student's design because she had curves. But now I'm going to change it into curves. So I'm going to use my zoom tool, and I'm going to zoom in around the bottom portion to start with. And what I'm going to do is, wherever she has a curve, I'm going to take my straight line and I'm going to match it to her curve. So I'm going to do that with the shape tool. So I'm going to click on the shape tool, and I'm going to click on each of the line segments that I want to change. So I need to change this segment of the line right here. So I click on it to select it. I'm going up to the top and I'm clicking on the Convert Line to Curve tool, which gives me handles, edit handles. And now I'm just going to pull on these little blue handles to match the line underneath. And I'm going to do that for every single line that should have been a curve. 
Now you're saying, yeah, well now you have to go back and edit. Well, even with the Beezer Curve tool, you're not going to get a perfect curve when you're drawing. You're going to have to go back and edit your curve anyways. So rather than worry about how perfect the curve is, I would rather just think about my path first and then I deal with the curve after. It's just a personal preference. You can certainly do it any way that works well for you. I just find this is, is the way that I do it and I just wanted to give you that little tip so that you know you have the option of e using a line drawing tool even though you do indeed want to create a curve. So I'm just going to work my way up here. Now this isn't perfect. I'm just doing this very quickly for sake of the video for you. Uh, but you'll get the idea as to how it is done with this technique. I'm just quickly drawing my, pulling my lines up to create the curves. So you will go back and fine tune, of course, afterwards if you don't get your curves exactly the way you want them. But this is just another alternative way. The reason we had to draw this the way we did was because the start and stop on this program, you can't separate the two. Start and stop are the same point. So if you could start at one side and have it end on another side, that would be great. But in this particular program, your start and stop point is at the same place. So you have to think much more carefully about the path, about where you're going to start and make sure that where you start is where you want it to stop so that it goes to the next segment in a continuous forward moving fashion. So it just takes a moment here. So it's a little fussy, but uh, it does, does work. We're almost there. And again, I zoom in so that I can see my lines just a little bit better. If you can see it without zooming in, certainly you don't need to use the zoom tool. And we're just about there. These edit handles are really useful. You can drag the shape to whatever position you need uh, for the accuracy of your design. And there we go. I'll go back to fit it to the work table. And there we have the design there. Now I had set up my drawing board that this would be a bean stitch all the way around and there would be no fill. So I set up my drawing board first. So now when I go to my stitch tab, it is not a bean stitch and I don't know why I had set that up. Um, let me just go back to my artwork tab. I'm going to double check. And it is indeed a bean stitch and no fill. So I'm not sure why the program is giving me a satin edge stitch instead, but that's okay. I can fix it here. I'm going to go back over to my set fill stitch, set for bean stitch, and I'm just going to click on the elements. So I'm not sure why it did that, but it did, but it, it is fixable. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to color it so I can see it a little bit easy, a little more easily. Use the spray can tool so it covers everything all at once. All right. So from here, now I can check the path when I'm uh, I want to sew and make sure that it's going exactly the way I need it. So I'm going to click on the simulate stitching tool, which is the little sewing machine here, and I'm going to slow this down just a bit and then play forward. And it should start at the bottom and work its way up without jumping. So now it's a continuous stitch all the way up. And that's how you can check your path. And again, you know, you might want to go back and edit it a little bit more, make your curves a little bit more. Um, the way you want them to look. But this is just a quick and easy way 
to take that same shape that used two different tools to draw it and it's now created using one tool with using the shape tool to edit it to get that continuous motion forward. So that is pathing with two different shapes but created with one tool.